This new electric motor weighs 40 kilograms. So what's that? Just under 90 pounds. It has 850 horsepower and costs half the price of normal electric car motors. Kind of insane, right? Imagine if, imagine if some car company, Toyota or Volkswagen, came out and said, guys, we have this new engine. It has 850 horsepower and it weighs 40 kilograms and costs, well, a couple of thousand dollars to manufacture. Everyone would have gone ballistic. But yeah, obviously that never happened and is never going to happen. Now, this is in spite of the fact that Toyota is currently investing hundreds of millions of dollars on its next generation engine technology, which it says is far better than any electric car technology. Well, my friends, Donut Lab are doing some amazing things. In fact, this small startup has produced something better, I think, than anything Toyota has ever made in their existence. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Donut Lab say that they're going to revolutionize the EV industry with these new electric car motors. And you know what? I sometimes think about these claims from battery companies and different companies. We're going to revolutionize this and that. Now, you know, I sometimes think to myself, yeah, sure you are. Okay, good one. Honestly, though, in this case, these motors are 50% cheaper to produce than conventional electric motors. They have way more horsepower. I mean, 845 horsepower in a motor weighing 40 kilograms that sits in the wheel. It's insane. This is the kind of thing where I don't think the world's ever seen before. And what's all the more remarkable about this is this is actually a Finnish startup company. Donut Lab presented a particularly powerful family electric motors, all of which are wheel hub motors, and they're intended for cars. They can deliver 630 kilowatt in each motor making um, the electric motor extremely powerful. Now, it's true, it's true. There are some downsides to wheel hub motors, right? But it appears to me that the biggest one is rotational mass because rotational mass reduces efficiency enormously. For example, for a road bicycle, right? Road bicycle races, you don't want a heavy wheel. It significantly makes your bike slower. And I've obviously done a lot of bike racing, over the years, triathlons, road bike racing, BMX racing with the boys. And the quest is always to make the rim and the wheel, the rotational mass lighter. That still does apply to electric cars. But considering these weigh only 40 kilograms, well, it's not as much of a big deal. Donut Lab is based in the Helsinki area and is a subsidiary of the Finnish motorbike manufacturer, Verge Motorcycles. The first donut motor was developed some time ago for its Verge TS electric motorbike, which resulted in the motor having an empty rear tire. Donut Lab has now transferred this concept to other types of vehicles and confidently claims to have the world's best torque and highest power density of, well, any motor ever. And as far as I can tell, they're actually right. The car version of the wheel hub motor fits into a 21 inch tire. In other words, that's a really small tire. It weighs only 40 kilograms, achieves a torque of 4,300 newton meters and a power output of 630 kilowatt, which is 845 horsepower. Now, considering these go on a hub, you would think that you would have two. You wouldn't just use one because it'd be sort of weird to have power coming from one single hub motor on a car with four wheels, right? It'd seem unbalanced. So that would mean having two of these on a car, whether it's front wheel drive or rear wheel drive. Now, I don't think you'd want that much power on a front wheel drive car. You get massive axle tramp. Uh, it'd just be too much power for the front wheels to handle. Rear wheel drive is, in my opinion, the only solution. It's either rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. Now, if you went all wheel drive, imagine that. Four motors weighing a total of 160 kilograms, far lighter than any internal combustion engine that's ever gone into any full production car ever, and you would have 3,400 horsepower. 3,400 horsepower from 100, from a, 160 kilograms. That is ridiculous. I'm going to guess most people would just go with the two hub motors, right? But even that, even that is 1,700 horsepower just from two really small hub motors. I mean, guys, this is ridiculous. Now, you would think this would be expensive, but it's not. Apparently, they're about 50% of the price of a normal hub motor. 
Now, yes, the torque figures, are, they're not really correct because that's at the rotor output, not the true output. But, I mean, these motors are still going to have a lot of torque and their horsepower numbers are legitimate. So getting back to the unsprung weight, meaning the rotational weight being in the wheel instead of carrying that in the car. Rotational weight, like I said, is much more of a negative than sprung weight, as in weight inside the car. In-wheel motors add lots of it. But Donut reckons the sheer amount of power and torque available essentially counterbalances the weight of the motor. They may have a point. The thing is, how exactly does this happen? Donut Lab CEO Mark Letamaki said, Great unsprung mass has been the most important reason why everyone hasn't used motors integrated within the tyre in their vehicles. Through the torque and power density we've now achieved, the relative weight of the motor is so small that the unsprung mass is insignificant. Now, I think it would still be significant, to be honest, but not as nowhere near as significant as what it would have been in the past when motors were much heavier. Now, word is that um, car manufacturers will use these motors, but they'll detune them for smaller cars or for normal cars, for non-performance cars. I mean, imagine putting, uh, you know, two of these hub motors on an MG4 or a BYD 803. It just wouldn't handle. It'd be insane. It'd be like massively overpowering a vehicle and people would just crash them and it'd be really dangerous. So they'll just detune the motors. Speaking of detuning the motors, they actually have a version of the same hub motor that's at, that's intended for semi trucks, large, you know, very, very large semis. That has 200 kilowatt or just under 300 horsepower and 3,000 newton meters of torque, claimed torque, of course. It also weighs 40 kilograms. Now, obviously, in a semi, you have lots and lots of wheels. So the number of hub motors that you use would depend on how much power you need, what kind of weight you're carrying in that semi. There is also a motor, motorcycle version. It has 150 kilowatt, so that's about 230 horsepower. That weighs 21 kilograms. That's really light. That could be used in cars. 150 kilowatt would be perfect. Two of those together, 300 kilowatt, still probably too much power for most cars. Still, though, 300 kilowatt at a weight of only 42 kilograms. Each motor, 21, 21 kilograms. Now, that would be the absolute sweet spot for most cars out there, wouldn't it? 42 kilograms for the motors, and you've got 300 kilowatt. That's insane. Can you see how now this really could be revolutionary and make a huge difference? The point here is as well, the motorcycle version is much smaller. It's actually able to fit in a 17-inch wheel. So you could have, in fact, in, inside of a 17-inch tire. So you can have a much smaller space that the motor is taking up, and it's also very light. And I think a weight of 21 kilograms in each car wheel would make a tiny and negligible difference. They also have a, a scooter version. The scooter version has a crazy amount of power as well. It has 15 kilowatt and 300 claimed newton meters of torque. It weighs eight kilograms. And there's a drone version. It has three kilowatt and 20 newton meters of torque and weighs 1.5 kilos. I think that drone version sounds amazing. So what is the difference between this motor and a normal electric car motor? Electric motors usually use a stator and a rotor with the latter rotating inside the former. Donut Lab thinks that though this design is outdated, it's just not in it. it's not powerful enough, it's not efficient enough, and they're too heavy. And it says a hollowed out rotor can offer important advantages. Now, for more than a century, we have used electric motors that have a stator and a rotor. And it's worked out well. But Donut Lab says, well, it's time to move on from that. That's old school. And I've got to admit, I mean, having one e-motor that can scale up from a drone to a scooter, to a motorbike, to you know potentially a mid-spec EV to a super powerful supercar is pretty damn remarkable. I've never heard of this before. Now, looking at the power to weight ratio, it is absolutely ridiculous. It's actually 15.75 kilowatt per kilogram. That's 9.6 horsepower per pound. So yeah, this is the world's most power dense electric motor ever. It's significantly more power dense in, compa in comparison to the what was the winner before, Koenigsegg's motor. And the Koenigsegg electric motor uh, had similar power numbers, but it's actually much heavier than this. Now, one of the big advantages, as I mentioned, is the, the weight of these motors. They're very, very light. A traditional electric car motor normally weighs a, between about 70 to 120 kilograms. So they're much lighter than an engine, but nowhere near the weight of these motors. And... The big advantage, says Donut Lab, of these in-wheel hub motors is they have fewer components. There's no need for gearing like in a traditional drive unit, which saves more weight 
and space. And that's why the donut motor weighs about a third of a conventional rotor and stator electric drive unit with comparable performance. Uh, Tesla have said this a few times. Musk has said this a few times as well. The best part is no part. So in-hub motors do reduce the number of parts that can break in a car. Uh, they're lighter, more powerful, more efficient. To be honest, it actually sounds like they will be a game changer. Here's what the CEO of the company said. This is the first electric motor that truly responds to the current requirements of electric vehicles and opens doors to completely new types of solutions. We've managed to bring something new to operators in the field that has previously not been possible. And this, in a nutshell, is Donut Lab's mission. What this could do, guys, is reduce the weight of an electric car immediately because the 21 kilogram version has more than enough power. That's 150 kilowatt per motor. Two of those together is only going to weigh 40. 42 kilograms in total so you're going to be reducing the weight of your car by probably around about 80 kilograms that's a big difference right and you're also going to get be getting more power at the same time interestingly donut lab also offers other important components within its modular donut platform these include battery modules computer units and the software for actually controlling the vehicle the company's vision is for customers to be able to select the components they need from a catalog and couple them quickly and easily with standard connections to kind of almost make their own EVs if they wanted to. According to Donut Lab, the components are designed to function optimally individually, but together they form a harmonized overall package and ensure high performance. Guys, these could really work as in retro mods. So people taking gasoline powered cars, petrol powered cars, diesel powered cars, and converting them into electric cars. It, this could make it much more simple and much cheaper to actually do that. And also really kind of interesting and exciting at the same time, you have to customize your own car. There are so many advantages, advantages of, there are so many advantages of these hub motors. I'm actually just shocked at how much of a, a game changer they really are. I mean, think about it. What compares with these? How, what competes with these? Really nothing at this point in time. Let me know your thoughts in the comments.